thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for Queen Sugar Season Two, Episode Thirteen. Today, Jesus, I'm like, you know, it was a very great episode. The ending had me like, <gasps> you know, I was just so thrown back, you know, I'm like, I just, I, wow, okay, so, let's just get on through it so that I can get to the ending, because I'm telling you people, I was just like, oh, what the, f you know, so, with the beginning of the episode, we see, um, Ralph Angel's in the backyard, and he's, like, hosing off some boots, and he's washing his face and stuff like that, and then we see Darla, you know, watching her man, watching her future husband, watching her fiancé, you know what I'm saying? Be a grown man out in these streets and he in the backyard cleaning himself. And it's with the water hose. And it's something about a grown man. <sighs> Just being manly. I'll say that. Just, you know, be, he's you know, being manly, basically, is what I'm saying. And that's basically what Ralph Angel was doing. Um, we see that he was home from work. And that he actually took some shifts. At that shrimp place that Hollywood was telling him about the last episode when Hollywood told him, you know, if you want to be good to Darla, you might have to do some things that you don't want to do. You, you know, you're going to have to bite the bullet sometimes. So he did. He went ahead and took those couple of shifts. And, you know, Darla's like, you know, you don't have to do this. You know, with the money from the farm, from my job, you know, we'll be okay. He was like, we don't need to. No, I don't want it to be okay. You know, me working a couple extra shifts, you know, here, you know, it won't hurt. It'll be a good thing. And, you know what I'm saying, that's a good thing. It's a thing where sometimes, y'all know, Ralph Angel can be selfish. You know what I'm saying? He can want things to be specifically his way or no way. And it's cool to see that he took the provider route, took the man route, took the husband route. And he's doing what he got to do so that they can have some extra money in the household. <clears throat> so that was a good thing. Um... Next, we see Ava at her doctor's appointment. And, you know, before she brought up that they thought she had fibromyalgia, and the doctor lets her know that she actually has lupus. And, you know, that her body had been trying to fight off what they thought was a disease, but she doesn't really have a disease. And, you know, so that's what her body has been going through. And that is, she has lupus. And... She's shocked. You know what I'm saying? Having a diagnosis of anything is, is shocking. I have... I know someone who has lupus. I have people who have... I know people who has lupus. I know someone who has uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, MS. Um, you know, so it's, it's hard when anyone is diagnosed with any kind of disorder or disease or illness. Um, so, yeah, you know, she's in shock. So... You know, the next thing we see her at home and she's sitting on her bed and she's still kind of sitting there in shock because, you know, she's like, you know, okay. I, even the doctor told her, you know, with her diagnosis, it's manageable. Now, manageable doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means we can manage, you know, the pain and the, the symptoms. Um, so, yeah. But she's at home, and so she calls Darla. And I'm like, oh, she going to call Darla to come help her? Okay, that's different. So she calls Darla to actually let Darla know that she can't help her plan the wedding shower and everything. She's like, oh, I thought I had an order that was due next week. It's actually due this week, so I just can't do it. You know, usually Hollywood helps me, but he's, you know, gone out of town. And, you know, I'm going to have to get this done, so I can't help do it. She was like, but, you know, I'm going to help you, you know, get food from the diner. And, you know, I have a pie that's going to be delicious. She's like, so, you know, I just can't physically do it, but I can make sure that it gets taken care of. <clears throat> Which is, you know, uh, and so Darla kind of looked disappointed. But, you know, when I, if I said, but I got a pie that I made, your, your parents going to love it. You know, it kind of lifted her spirits a little bit. It wasn't like I'm totally, you know, flaking on you. It was, I have something else I have to do, but I'm going to still be there for you. So, you know, that was a good thing. Um, next we see Remy, and not, but let me go back. I Vi and Darla's relationship now is so heartwarming. Because remember, she used to didn't even want Darla in her house. Like, she did, she could not stand Darla. 
based on Darla's past. So even her calling Darla and treating her like family and like a niece, which is wonderful to see. So I wanted to mention that too. Um, so next we do see Remy. He's coming in to, I'm, I'll be having my hands down. I'll be rocking. I'll be wondering if people think it's weird. I don't know. That's how I kind of soothe myself. And it's late and I'm getting tired or whatever. But I don't want y'all like, why is she sitting here rocking like she crazy? I do it at work too. So um, Remy comes in. He's talking to Charlie. And, you know, he's letting her know that everyone loved the festival. They had a great time. And they were hoping that they can have another festival next year. And she was like, <laughs> course we can as long as you help me go ahead try to flirt with that man because that's your that's you know that's your boo that's bae and you know he's like of course i'll help you and he was like you know i was thinking <clears throat> that you know to celebrate we can go out to celebrate you know go out to celebrate and she was like how about we just stay in okay charlie okay and he was like oh okay and then maybe have some dessert after you know maybe 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 <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And he kind of kissed on the neck and stuff. She's like, oh, really? And he, she, what kind of dessert? And he was like, you know, I don't know yet, but I'm working on it. You know, I'm thinking about it. And then we figure out what they're talking about. We know they're talking about, they're talking about sex. But, you know, they haven't had sex yet. And he's like, you know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to work up to it, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, but I'm getting there. Because he says, you know, he hasn't had sex since he had sex with his wife, you know, and she died. So he hasn't had sex with anyone since his wife died. So for him, it's, a, it's still a big thing to have sex with someone else. Um, but he lets her know, but I want to have sex with you. You know what I'm saying? Well, what he says, he, no, he says, but, but you were, but you was who I want. You know, he, he, that's the way we say it was. Hey, that's what we want to have sex with. But it was still a beautiful moment. You know, Charlie says, you know, I get it. I understand. You know, I totally respect that. Um... Because even even though his wife has, you know, been passed away for a couple of years and she's only been divorced for a couple of weeks or whatever, um, or maybe he is that, you know, it ain't been that long. Um, it's still a cute thing to see them crushing on each other. And, you know, they're two adults who are trying to be together. They have this, you know, this cosmic connection between the two of them and they're trying to explore it without rushing things. And I'm like, that's how relationships should be anyway. You can't just meet someone and just go sleeping with them all willy-nilly. I mean, you can if you want to because we're all adults in the situation. But, you know, sometimes there's nothing wrong with taking your time and making sure that you are ready for that intimate connection. And that's what Remy is making sure of. He's just making sure that he can physically, mentally, emotionally do it. And, but he's still making sure that he has that connection with Charlie to let her know, you know, I'm not still hung up on my wife. I just want to be sure I'm able to do it. So, you know, she's like, you know, I respect that. Um, we see Charlie, not Charlie, Nova. She's at like lunch at a restaurant with her best friend, whose name is Sierra, uh, who I will remember because that's my goddaughter name. And cause I kept saying, I'm not going to remember her name, but I'm like, it's Cece's name. So yeah. So um, she's basically telling her how, you know, her and, um, Robert broke, broke up that, you know, he was trying to change her. She felt that she was losing herself, um, being with him. She was changing how she dressed and she was cha changing things about herself. And even though he was a good man, as she told him, you're a good man, you're just not good for me. And so her friend, you know, Sierra was like, well, you know, it's lucky for you that you caught yourself before you was, you know, in the sunken place and you was deep, deep, deep down in it. You know, some people don't realize how much they're getting lost in being in love with someone else. Because, you know, being in love with someone else, it doesn't mean that you lose yourself. I mean, you do to a certain extent, but you don't come become a whole completely different purpose solely for that person to want to be with you. It's a difference. So, they're talking, and she kind of just looks off to the distance, and it was like she saw a ghost. And I'm like, Nova. Nova, who you see? And who does Nova see? It's Calvin. Yep. Her and Calvin, you know, she she sees Calvin as he walked in. He's standing in the line. And as she's looking at him, he hasn't seen her yet. He kind of turns and he looks and he sees her. And they lock eyes. And it was like, you could, ooh, Jesus, baby. You know what I'm saying? It was a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying, feelings and emotions and that little connection between them two. And they were just staring at each other. And I'm looking like, hold up. Calvin real sexy. Was Calvin always this sexy? Was I missing it before? 
is it the same Calvin? I mean, I just need to figure out what's going on because I was looking like, hey Calvin, and I never said hey Calvin before when he was on when he was on here before. So, you know, they come face to face, and he's like, you know, hey, she's like, hey. You know, and the best friend sitting looking like, oh, okay, I guess I'll leave. And then you're like, no, 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 no. You know, this is my best friend. No, oh, this is my friend Calvin. So she kind of introduce, introduces them a little bit. And, you know, he's like, it's good to see you. And she's like, yeah, you too. I'm like, Nova, girl, okay. When Nova meets somebody, man, it's a connection, okay? So, you know, he's like, you know, well, can I call you later? And she's like, yeah, you do that. I'm like, so, you know, he walks off or whatever. And see her like, who is that? You never mentioned him to me, to me before. And she was like, yeah, you know, I haven't. You know, some things are just best left in the past. And every friend do have that guy who you was, like, probably talking to. And it was just, it was just a lot going on. And, you know, you just didn't want to share it because you was in the right but also in the wrong because, again, remember, Calvin was a married man. He was a married man who was also a cop. So, she didn't tell people because she was sleeping with a married man. But they had such a strong connection and things happened. She didn't even share it with her best friend. I mean, I don't think I would tell my best friend. Carla, if I was cheating, I don't think, if I was dating a married man, I don't think I would tell you because you would tell me about myself. Even though you know damn well I would never do that because that's not how I roll. But if I was Nova and you were Sierra... You know I'm saying I want to tell you because you would cuss my ass out. So you know I get it why that's something that she did not tell her best friend because you know your best friends don't let you off the hook for stuff, and you know so we see that. So um we see that there but back at Ralph Angel's place, everyone's coming over because Darla's parents are coming over for dinner. So you know Nova's there, Charles is there, Ralph Angel gets there, Darla's there, Forrest and Blue. And they like, where you been at? You know, you ain't been here all day. You ain't been helping us or nothing. He like, I was busy working. I went and turned in my beans. And you know what I'm saying? Some things happened. I'm like, what's up? What's wrong? And he was like, you know, Proctor's guest was off. So they like, dang, what, you know, what was, what happened? He was like, we actually made, it was a 20%. We say it was a 20%, the, the estimate was off by 20%. Um, it was 20% more than it was anticipated. Woo! Yeah! Go ahead, Ralph Angel. So, of course, he's he's happy and everything. And Charlie and Nova both said, you know, congrats, Ra. Um, And he's like, yeah, you know, so now we can really do the wedding and, you know, have a nice wedding. Because he got that extra money he'd been, work, he'd been wanting. So, you know, that's always a good thing. <clears throat> then, of course, they start dancing and stuff. Because, you know, it's a family gathering. And as they're dancing, you know, I, I walk up. And she stands there for a minute. She just kind of looks on. Because, of course, when you get diagnosed with stuff, you just have these moments of just seeing moments and wanting to be present in that moment to remember that moment in case you don't get that moment again. And I'm all for making moments and making memories and, you know what I'm saying, living in moments. I do that a lot. Um, so, you know, from there, we see Ralph Angel and Blue having a talk um, when they're getting dressed for Darla's parents to come over. And Blue was like, you know, he wants to look nice, so his grandparents will like him. Um, you know, Ralph Angel's like, you know, if they're going to like you, no one cannot like you, but, you know, Blue. He says, but what should I call him? You know, I've never had a grandmother, and, you know, I call uh, Papa, Papa. And, you know, so what do I call her father? Basically, he like, what do I call this person? I don't know what to call him. I, I haven't met him before. And they go over <clears throat> a few different names. Like, I don't want to call him Papa because that's what I call, you know, that's what he called Ernest. So he's like, you know, you know, they send all these different names. Um, cause different grandchildren call their grandparents by different names. Like my, I call all my grandfathers, grand, you know, Hey granddad, granddad, you know, I've always said granddad. Um, but my nephew called my father, um, granddad. So, we, anywho, uh, we, and we call my father granddad cause it, so DJ would always hear it saying granddad. Um, so when I call my grandparents granddaddy, granddaddy. Granny, granny and grandma is what I call my grandparents. So, you know, Blue uh, settles on calling him. What do you say was on calling him? Grandpa. I'm like, okay, that's a cool little thing. So, Darla parents get there. And, you know, Blue, 
uh, Ralph Angel and Darla are standing outside when they pull up. And we see her mother is played by Michael Michelle. I think she's such a wonderful actress. And her father, her father was played by a guy. I can't think of what his name is. But he has played in a lot of different things. He's a popular actor. And I can't think of what his name is. He's been around for a while. Um, so, you know, that's a great thing. And, you know, her mother hugs her. And this is, it's, there's this, you can just kind of feel this, I miss you. I love you. I'm so happy to see you feeling. You know what I'm saying? You can kind of tell how much he missed her. Um, her father was a little bit harder to read. And not in a mean, uh, disconnected way. But he was just more reserved. I mean, you can tell he missed his daughter, of course, or whatever. But at the same time, there was still a, a little something where Mike is a little bit of a disconnect and he was just harder to read than the mom. But you know, most men are like that sometimes. So, um, you know, they're like, you know, call us because the mom's name was Darlene, dad's name was Quincy. And you know, Darlene says to Blue, you know, this is, this is Blue. And then she's like, you know, you don't know me, but can I have a big, big hug? And he was like, sure. And he gave her, you know, a huge hug as kids do. And of course she embraced him like crazy. And then he instantly went and hugged his grandpa. Uh, and grandpa, again, was harder to read. You know, he wasn't standoffish. But I think for him, it's still, for all of them, it's something different. So, you know, that was that whole first meeting. Um, from there, we see at the dinner, Quincy, who was Darla's um, dad, is like, yeah, you know, Nova, you were so great on television. I think you should, you know, you could do that for a time. You know, you were so, I mean, giving her praises for her that. And she's like, oh, yeah, but you know, that's just kind of, kind of isn't the direction I want to go. He's like, really? Because you were just so amazing. It's just, it's just so, so amazing. And and Charlie, you, having that, you know, uh, sports management firm, you come here, you're the first black woman with the, the meal. You know, it's just, it's just so amazing. You know, it's just so great. And, you know, as he's saying that to Charlie and Nova, he ain't saying nothing to, to Darla. And, you know, Charlie's like, you know, well, yeah, but, you know, the meal, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without Darla. You know, she was, she has been, you know, tremendously helpful. And, you know, I could have did it without her. And then he was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess, you know, she can learn a lot from you guys. And then Ralph was like, she can also teach a lot, too. You know, she rebuilt her life from the ground up. And he was like, oh, yeah. So then mom was like, you know, that is very true. And we can't wait to hear, you know, the whole story about everything that happened. Because, again, they haven't talked to her about what has happened. They're just here with her. Um, so from there, we see Aunt Vi and Darlene and Blue. You know, Aunt Vi taking Blue home with her. Uh, and Darlene is helping them pack. And she's just spending time with her grandson. And, you know, her and Vi have a kind of a private conversation where, you know, she asks Vi if Blue has been affected by everything that he has been through in his life between, you know, because, you know, remember in the beginning, they were saying that Blue was with Darla in the beginning when she was getting high and prostituting herself. So, you know, Mom was just asking, like, did that affect him in any way? Does, this have, does he have any memory of that or whatever? And, you know, I Vi lets her know, you know, that Darla's a good mother now. You know, how Darla loves, you know blue to the moon and blue loves her to the stars and it was a great analogy um and he was like and she was like you know even though a lot happened that we won't forget and that we can't change you know he has been raised with love and he basically you know is a happy child and she's like i'm just so happy for that you know i'm just i can't thank you enough for what you've done for him and for being there for him and um i'm, ha I'm just happy to hear that and She's just thanking Aunt Vi for everything that she did. Because, again, remember when Darla was high and Rob Angel was in jail, Aunt Vi had blue for all that time. And, you know, Darlene's like, you know, oh, what's, I mean, you know, Aunt Vi's like, oh, no, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, we all here now, but, you know, those monthly checks you sent help. So we find out that. Where Darla had a thinking she had no contact with her parents, they had nothing to do with anybody. We come to find out, well, no, there was well, at least mom. I don't know about if dad was included in it, but I'm guessing he was. But they were sending um, monthly checks to Aunt Vi to help take care of Blue, which I'm like, we never knew that. We just thought Darla's parents just kind of disowned her. 
And then when they get to the house, they're these regular, non-angry people. Um, her father is a bit, I won't say judgmental, but I think he's still waiting to see how much all it has changed. So he, he can't praise her yet because he doesn't know her testimony yet. Um, so... You know, Darlene said how she's so sorry that she missed, you know, all that time with Blue and all that time with Darla. And I'm like, it's okay. You know, we all here now, so it's cool. So, I think it's like three more scenes. Um, Calvin goes to see... I'm scrolling through my notes. <laughs> Calvin goes to see Nova, basically. And, I mean, I have a lot of notes written about that. I'm going to break it down to where it's simple. Calvin says, I'm in love with you. I love you, you know, my whole life. I have done things that everyone else has wanted me to do. My father wanted me to go to be a police officer. I was a police officer. They wanted me to get married. I got married. Once I got married, she wanted to have kids. I had kids. I've done everything that everyone else has wanted me to do. I never did anything for myself until I met you. You were my first choice. I love you. I want to be with you. And whatever you want to do, I will do it. And, you know, I just promised myself if I gave, if I saw you or I had another chance, I wouldn't let the chance go without telling you how much I feel about you, how I feel about you. Um, so he confesses her love, his love for her. Good. Um, I love you more than anything. You know, I love you more than moon. Oh, I just love you more than whatever. Um, she says, I love you too. You know, they kiss and she was like, cause he said, you know, you're my freedom. You're the first thing I was free to do. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? Some people do that. They will live their lives based on what other people think they should do and how other people think they should act. And his first choice was Nova. Nova then said, you know, I love you too. And they kissed. But she says, but for me, I'm, you know, for you, I'm your freedom. But for me, you're my prison. And he's like, what? And she's, she basically says, I can't be my full self with you. Basically because you're white and you're a cop. Um, I can't cry about, you know, my black brother being shot and murdered and or whatever by um, a cop and nothing is done by it. You won't get that. I don't want to have to come home after defending my people and have to explain to you why I did it. Um, it's a whole different thing. You know, I can't. What else did she say? You know, and then she was like, you know, there are parts of me that you really don't even want to know. And he's like, yeah, that's not true. I've never told you I didn't want that. And she's like, yeah, but you know, you've never asked about those parts. And I think that's, and I always say I, I kind of steer clear of <sighs> different topics. I do believe that it's hard for black people to explain to white people the reason we deal with some of the things that we deal with. So I get her on that. However, I also feel like you can't use the excuse of you're a different race than me. So because I'm so pro-black, because I'm so for my people, I can't be with you. I think love has no race. You know what I'm saying? I don't think a person should... Because my thing is, that's the equivalent of saying good white people who aren't racist, who aren't bad cops, they can't love who they love because they happen to be white. I don't think that is a valid thing to say. I get that it's true for Nova. I get that because of the person that she is, she doesn't feel like she can be who her full self um, with him as a white cop um I hoped that she could see past that but she can't and I get it but I feel like sometimes in order for other races to get it we have to explain it to them. We have to let them know why it's wrong. And they should see us cry. They should see how fucking horrible it is to have a black man murdered and nothing is done about it. I think that's the way to change the conversation. Um, if you think about it, people who see terror, people who live it, 
people who are raised around it, that's how they have that experience. That's how they know of what they speak. We can expect people who don't, who aren't engulfed in it to be able to get it. You know what I'm saying? If the only people who are able to get it are the ones who live it, we will always be the only ones that get it. Yeah, you know, I hope y'all get what I'm saying. But, you know, so for that, she's like, you know, I just can't be with you. And she also says, you know, I never want to set aside who I am to be with you. And he's like, I never asked you to, you know, to. But, you know, she then says, you know, just because you want something to be, just because you think something is meant to be, it doesn't mean it has to be. And, you know, he ends up leaving and giving her a kiss. They end on great terms where he understands her what she's saying. And, you know, that was a good thing. Um, next, we see Remy and Charlie. And, you know, they they bought to have sex. Let's just be honest. You know, he comes over to the house. She's dressed up all her sexy stuff. She takes her robe off. She's in her bra and panties laying in the bed. And he's like, oh, my God, you look so beautiful. I can look at you forever. And um, I want to be with you forever. And when he says it, she paused like, wait, what? And she's kind of in shock. I mean, like, her body went stiff and, every, stiff and everything. And he's like, what's wrong? And she was like, you mean, like, forever, forever, ever, forever, ever? And he's like, well, no, nah, this kind of meant, like, you know, I meant it, you know, not literally, but yeah. She's like, oh, so it was like, you know, it was, it was like wordplay. Okay, well, fine. And he's like, wait, you know, I'm thrown off that you're so relieved that, you know, I don't mean, like, forever, forever. He was like... Do you ever want to remarry? Now, they have this conversation in the bed. They're about to do it, okay? They're about to get busy. And because he said, I can be, I want to be with you forever. I, I want you forever. It it clicked in her head. That could mean marriage. And then they have this, it's this weird, not weird. It's this dialogue where he's saying, you know, do you want to get ever get remarried? And she's like, I'm barely, I'm just divorced. I'm not thinking about getting remarried. And he's like, but would you want to get remarried? She's like, well, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. And then he's like, well, what about a family? She's like, what about a family? He's like, would you ever want more children? And she's like, I hadn't thought about it. Children hasn't been on the table for me. And he's like, well, I wanted more ch I want children. You know, I just didn't have, wasn't able to have them because life happened, but I want children. And then they kind of both sit up in the bed and they realize they haven't had the conversations you need to have with someone when you're an adult. You know, when you're an adult and you're trying to get in a relationship, um, if you don't both want children, that's the topic of, of conversation. If one person wants to get married eventually and the other person doesn't, that's a topic of conversation, especially in the beginning. So they're having that realization that they have not had that conversation. And he's wondering, like, well, is kids off the table? Would you be willing to think about it? And she's like... I don't know. So, you know, they don't have sex. <laughs> and then, you know, they're up talking and he's saying like, you know, she's like, I, you know, I, I fear karma. I don't know what kind of karma I have and what kind of karma you would get being with a person like me. And he's like, I like not knowing. You know, I enjoy that. I think we have enough time to spend getting to know each other to answer these questions, you know, and there is no rush. Which is beautiful because it's not like they breaking up and they're not going to be together anymore. They're just taking more time to get to know each other and ask these questions and figure out what their future would look like. Would their future be marriage? Would their future be no children? Would their future be marriage with no children or children and no marriage? You know, how would that work? Um, so, you know, that was a good thing to see. So, we then see... Um... Darla talking to her mom and a, re a really amazing conversation where it was a, a, a the aspect of this is how I felt like you treated me and this is exactly how I was treated. It was two different things where, you know, her mom was like, you know, you have uh, blossomed so much in this environment and around the, in this community. And she's like, well, yeah, because I trust them, you know, their, their family. And she's like, you say that as if we're not your family anymore. And she was like, well, no, I just know where I stand with them. And she was like, what does that mean? She's like, well, mom, for years, I would call you. I would send letters and nothing. She was like, so I just feel like I've been clear with where I stood for years. And her mom was like, 
No, you can't sit here and play the victim. You can't sit here and act like you, you know, you had clarity. You don't because if you had clarity, you would know that just because you say the word, just because you say something doesn't mean it's true. She's like, you would call us all the time. You would be high. You would call us and say, say that you're clean, but you're not clean. You would call us and ask for our help, but you wouldn't respect the way we would give you. You wouldn't accept our help. You, would, you wouldn't respect the way we loved you. And she was like, so we never shunned you. You were just, basically you were in your addiction and you saw things how you saw things. But that's not how it was. She's like, you would call and say, I'm clean. I love you. I need your help. But you never meant any of it. And we know that's what addicts do. And she's like, that's basically what you did. And she was like, you know, eventually we had to distance ourselves from you to protect ourselves from being hurt by you because you would call and say you need help. And we were across the country. We, because they don't live in Louisiana. We're clear across the country, you're calling us for help, and then we would come, and you're not there. You would say that you're coming home, you wouldn't come. She was like, it broke us. It physically, mentally, emotionally broke us. Your father took it really hard, so we had no choice but to distance ourselves from you to protect our own sanity, basically. And Darla, she's like, and I hope you haven't told these people that we shunned you. And she was like, well, that's how I felt. That's how I felt that you guys, that's what I felt you guys did to me. Um, she then says to mom that she's right. And, you know, she says, she, what did she say? I'm reading through my notes. Okay, so no, <laughs> I'm sorry. So your daughter said, you know, you're right. I have to take full responsibility for my part in it. You know, I'm sorry because I'm a mother now. So now I can feel your heartbreak at what I did to you. She was like, you know, please accept, you know, my apology. Let me make amends. I'm sorry for what I did to you. You know, can you please forgive me? I'm clean. I love you. And her mom said, you know, I forgive you. I believe you. You know, I want you to feel free. I trust that you are who you say you are now. And it was a great moment. It was a moment of you thought we shunned you. You felt like we shunned you, but we didn't. And even on Darla's end, knowing I thought y'all didn't care, but y'all cared so much for me that y'all had to distance yourself from me. Y'all couldn't take it because y'all loved me so much. Beautiful conversation. Um, you know, we see the next scene is Darla making amends with her father. And she's like, you know, I'm a good mom. I'll be a good wife. And he says, I know you will. You know, I, I agree. You know, a marriage is built on, you know, solid ground. You have to start a marriage on solid ground. And um, Rob Angel would understand, but don't you have to make amends with him too. And I'm like, he said, you know, Rob Angel will understand if you tell him the truth. Don't you have to make amends with him too. I got confused. Like, what are you talking about? What's going on? So, she go talk to him. And talking to Ralph Angel, she walks to him in the backyard. He's in the backyard doing whatever. And she's like, you know, you know, Ralph, you know, Ralph Angel, I love you so much. Please don't hate me. And he's like, Darla, you're scaring me. And she was like, you know, when we first got together, you know, I was doing things and I was, you know, one time I went out and I got really high. She's like, and I got really high on something very strong. And she was like, and I went out and I had sex with someone and I don't know who it was. And then he's like, he's quiet. He's quiet. And she's like, but you know, oh my God, it's so hard. And she was crying and she was like, blue. And I'm like, blue what? And she's like, blue. And he's like, no, nah, no. Nah. She's like, blue might not be yours. Darla, what? What, Darla? When I tell you that shocked the dog out of me, I was like, no. Ralph Angel loves blue. And when she said, Ralph Angel, blue might not be yours. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. And he just kind of walks off. And just, because he's broken. 
You know what I'm saying? He's broken. And I can't wait to see the evolution of this story because one is, if even if, if Blue is still his child, will the betrayal he felt that Dar because Darla has been lying to him all this time. Just in the fact that she's never told him Blue might not be his. Um, that's a lie within itself. It's at least an omission. And we already know Ralph Angel's sensitive, so we know he's going, you know, he's not going to get over this. Um, so, you know, it's like, okay, if Blue comes out to be his, can he forgive Darla for the omission she, she did? Um, okay, let's say he does forgive her. Let's say, other scenario, Blue turns out not to be his son, biologically. And will he be able to still be Blue's father because blood don't make you family. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot to be family. And I hope, I can't wait to see how they do that. You know, because it's a thing of, would Ralph Angel be so distraught that he doesn't look at Blue the same um, if, he turn, if it turned out that Blue wasn't his? You know, what is that dynamic? You know what I'm saying? I can't wait. And that's how the episode went off, her telling her, her telling Ralph Angel that Blue might not be his. So, that is my review of Queen Sugar. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be back next week with the next review. and But also tomorrow with other reviews. So, remember, always check back to my channel um, for other reviews. So, I am Jay Lee. This is Tennis Corner. Until next time, people.